come down middles. Uh, we'll have a ball. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's play well. You going to bowl first? Uh, yeah, we want to toss. We'll have a bowl, yeah. yeah. What's the thinking? Uh, there's a little bit in it. Uh, I want to give our young bowling attack best chance of uh, a bit of grass on the wicket and get into their batting early. And what do you think is the most important thing for England to do this first day? Uh, put it in the right areas and take our catches. And that's true as well. When Nasser Hussain won the toss against Australia and chose to bowl on what looked like a batsman's paradise, he made the most famous, or should I say infamous, call since E.T. phoned home. That's a sweet stroke. What a beautifully hit shot. Uh, two on the trot. Tip that hard, Matthew Hayden. It's gone right through. Another misfield. It hasn't been a good day for England. Good use of the feet. That's four. Got past the ball. Got past mid off. And this massive crowd. Loving this innings from Matthew Hayden. What a year he's having. Oh. Sweeps. Goes fine. There'll be four more. This is what he can do is scratch his head. What was that again, NASA? Put it in the right areas and take our catches. In the air, this could be out cover. Should catch this. Should certainly be out. Oh, he's dropped it. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Craig White on his knees, the ball of the captain. He'll be in shock. Hayden whacks that away through mid wicket. That's four more. The second best test score, and really the wheels are falling off there from England. It's four. What a shot. That's a red hot off drive. Crashes into the rope. Four more. So stumps. Australia went on to make 364 for two at stumps on day one of the series. Surely that call is still ringing in his head. Uh, I want to give our young bowling attack best chance of uh, a bit of grass on the wicket and get into their batting early. Described as the rat that joined the sinking ship, England selectors chose Australian-trained fast bowler Martin McCaig to join Captain Mike Atherton's squad for the 94-95 Ashes series. Bad delivery. Slater whips it away. It's going towards the boundary. There's the final. He knocks it on. It's four more, is it? Yes, and that's not good enough. Philip Tufnell concedes three runs. It's well bowled and well played. That's through again. That'll be four more. The run's flowing here at the Gabba. The attacking field, Taylor and Slater finding the gaps. And that's a rather pleasant way to bring up the 500 in Test cricket. Martin McCaig has uh, got to get his compass sorted out. In the first Test, McCaig conceded 80 runs in 14 overs before leaving the field with an upset stomach, which was a coincidence because most of his efforts had made England's fans sick. This is McCaig again. He's got that one down fine, and uh, that may well go to for four as well. Yes, into the fence too. Yes, McCaig, very unhappy and uh, not surprising. Not surprisingly either. That one uh, was again a bad delivery. Just helped on its way down to fine leg. What do I do now? And when McCaig picked up the bat, their stomach ache did not improve. Oh, over goes the house, the Yorker. Queen Bowl, neck and crop. Martin McCaig, so what a fascinating day's play here at the Gabba at 6 for 133. Still quite a bit of time to go, but uh, the Australians are moving fairly swiftly now. Shane Warren, 6 for 69 from 46 overs. Ah! Oh, and there's another England one. losing the Test match by 184 a very, runs. Very short time with the crease from Martin McCaig. A very, very good flipper from Shane Warren. That went zip, and Martin McCaig also went zip. On this day, Australian captain Alan Border leaves one he wished he hadn't. Oh, and he's bowled him. Has he? No, that's hit the stumps. Yes, it has. I thought I heard a clonk there. Border's gone. What a beautiful delivery that one was. It pitched just outside, well, round about off stump, held its line, and Border was absolutely... It proved costly. South Africa bowled the remaining five Australians out for 43 to win the match by five runs. South Africans have got to be happy. Alan Border's gone for seven. If Kim Hughes was Captain Hook, then a head-high bouncer was his Peter Pan, the enemy that would bring about his downfall. 
Oh, he's hit that way down there. Will he get it? He's got it. Yes, he has. That's the end of Kim Hughes. He's been out hooking this summer on numerous occasions. They didn't need a body line field. They needed one fieldsman. And the Australian captain departs in Australia in real trouble. Joel Garner bowls now to Kim Hughes. There's the hook. And there's the fielder. And he's out caught. Off the hook shot. And Kim Hughes, for the second time in the series, is caught at long leg off the hook. And this wicket just falling at the wrong time for the Australians. The ball certainly moved in a little bit off the track. Hughes resigned as Australia's captain well, after this test. Long discussion. Well, it looks to me as if they're going to bow underarm off the last ball. Rod Marsh is saying no, mate. Arguably the worst cricketing call of all. When Australia's Trevor Chappell bowls an underarm on the last ball of the match, denying any hope of a New Zealand victory. This is possibly a little bit disappointing. We haven't believed it. Trevor Chappell was socially shunned for years afterwards, but might have got himself a great endorsement deal with a deodorant brand for the most foul underarms ever. Well, that's disappointing. Hey, by the way, New Zealand, can Yogi Bear have his clothes back? I, I am lost for words. What is that? <laughs> well, it suggests that uh, he's saying, I'm Colin Miller. I bowled. On the morning of this Just test match, Australia's Colin Miller had Courtney Walsh seeing seven, blue. I think. <laughs> Courtney, Courtney Walsh is laughing. You can't believe it. I've never seen that in a test match. He's coming down. I think he's peeling against the reflection off the head. Oh, the crowd are roaring here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Wanting to make sure it's Colin Miller. The thing is, Miller's Nana now wants to know where her hair rinse has gone. Well, Kepler, well, that's close. That time he's got him playing back. The Indian captain not happy, saying that he may have hit that. What's going on? He's saying, please, please, what a tour. Travis Carr suggesting that he got a thick edge onto that delivery. The man who's walked so often the series, very annoyed with that decision. Yeah, it's an annoyed man, and he's still uh, not prepared to uh, not prepared to leave the ground. Here's a first. Well, India's Sunil be... Gavaska, who and was on strike, now wants to him. go on strike. And he is telling Chahan to stay there and sending Ven Sarkar out. So that that's a good move there on behalf of the manager of the Indian side. And uh, it's a very upset Gavaskar who leaves the ground. Here we see England's Chris Broad go out we got him. and then make doubly sure of it. Took his eye off the ball and it's one very upset English opening batsman. Conference between Jones and the umpire. Now I think what uh, he might have asked for is the sweatband off Kirtley's uh, right hand. Now, umpire Prue has... Um, a difficult task here. He has to convince Kirtley Ambrose, who's six foot eight, that he's to take off the sweatband on his right wrist before he bowls. Dean Jones, Jones says he only asked Kirtley if he could see his charm bracelet, and Ambrose took it the wrong way. That could generate an extra yard or two from Kirtley, I would think. In fact, he took five for 32. Very, very swift delivery. Cuts, cuts beautifully off the back foot. This is going down the hill. This will go all the way. Never short of a word, Shane Warne explains to England's Paul Collingwood how determined he is to make it into a cricket wonders and blunders show. And there's banner going on between Collingwood and Warne. You're making me concentrate, Warne. You're making me concentrate. Good call, Warney. 